Well, welcome back to another episode of the Pierce Dispatch Podcast. Today, we're talking about fleet standardization, and I'm with Mike Fednew um, out of our commercial dealership in Canada. Um, Mike, could you introduce yourself? Yeah, absolutely. Hi, Ali. Uh, yeah, my name is Mike Fednew. I work for Commercial Emergency Equipment. I am the sales manager for the Western portion of Canada. Could you tell me what fleet standardization is? You know, it's a bit of a tough question. Fleet standardization means something different to just about every client. But, you know, the intent behind it remains the same. Um, The whole idea behind fleet standardization is creating an atmosphere when it comes to apparatus that allows the department to do the same things over and over and over again. That repeatability transitions into training, which transitions into a successful firefight for all of those firefighters. On the apparatus side of things, what it means is creating a spec for an apparatus that really encompasses everything the department wants to do and being able to repeat that time and time again so that it creates an ease of purchasing and an ease of use. So then why would a department choose to do the standardization? You kind of hit a bunch of notes as to what the benefits are, but why, if I was the chief of a department, why would I want to standardize my fleet? You know, and again, it's a it's a tough question. Uh, you know, procurement policies that we see across the nation, across our country, across the United States, really have some some tough challenges, I guess, when it comes to spending public money. So fleet standardization is a, it, it really is an under, it's an undertaking for a lot of, for a lot of departments. And again, it's, it's different for everybody, but you know, the main reason that, that departments benefit from fleet standardization or why they would want to standardize their fleets is to maintain similarities in training and in operations. Now, the last thing that we want to do as firefighters is you know, get onto a scene at three o'clock in the morning when you're 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 in the middle of a firefight and be unfamiliar with the pieces that you're using. And you know, truth be told, the the tools that you use in that scene are really what's going to help you be successful as a firefighter. Making sure that each and every one of those is the same helps you be successful without even thinking about it. You know, that three o'clock in the morning hits, you've got engines coming from different stations all the way around the place. You could be anywhere on that scene. But when you go to engine three, and it's exactly the same as engine 42, it makes a huge difference in the actual operation of that scene. Yeah. And it sounds like you're speaking almost a little from experience. Are you a firefighter? I am a firefighter, actually. I've been a firefighter for the last 17 years. Okay. What department? Uh, I work for the Red Deer County Fire Department. I am a captain in my home station. Uh, It's not the only department I've been on. I did spend some time with the Innisfail Fire Department, which is just a few miles north of that. Uh, You know, it's one of those things that Every firefighter, I'm sure, in the world would uh, would say along with me, once you start, it gets in your blood and you just can't stop. Could you tell me what are the largest differences when it comes to purchasing a fleet versus a single apparatus? Well, I really, very obviously speaking, the biggest difference is cost, right? You know, when you look at the cost, there's a lot of savings when you purchase multiple apparatus versus a single one. But at that same token, you're still spending a significant amount more money. You know, very simply, if it's a million dollars for one fire truck, you're going to spend ten million dollars on ten, and that's a that's a large chunk of money to uh, to come up with right up front. One of the bigger, one of the, I guess the bigger changes though, when you purchase a fleet versus purchasing a single apparatus, is the ability to ensure that each and every one of them is the same. You know, and the more you can do on the initial portion of things, the more the more work you can put into the back end to make sure that all of those are repeatable and the same. And, you know, the number of trucks that you're purchasing up front, you know, as that number grows, it's the same people that are building those same trucks time and time again, you know, one after the other, after the other, after the other. And it creates, it, it creates a, just a, a whole ecosystem of the exact same product, right? Mm-hmm. So when you say there's a lot of work on the back end, what would that look like if someone's working to standardize their fleet? One of the things that we have to keep in mind as, you know, not only as salespeople, but as, you know, purchasers, fire chiefs, firefighters, the people on the committee, um, you know, and I I hate to sound doom and gloomy about this, but if we make one mistake on one truck, it's just one mistake on one truck. If you make one mistake on a 15 truck order, that's one mistake on 15 units. So it's an order of magnitude larger. Because of that, on a fleet purchase and fleet standardization, you know, aspect of things, it's really significant and and needs to be uh, a very 
detail process. There needs to be a lot of attention to detail in that so that those types of things don't happen. The other thing that we have to think about too is acceptance on the floor, right? The firefighters need to be able to accept these rigs. And of course, if you buy 15 of them and they don't like them, it's, it's never a good thing, right? So we want to make sure that all of that work is done on the backside of things, you know, between the sales rep and the apparatus committee, the fire chief, the purchasing agent, whoever that is, to, you know, create a system that we know is going to be successful over the lifetime of that fleet. It's a pretty significant amount of work to make that happen, but the benefits come out in droves in the long run. So could you tell me how it is integrating a new design or new technology when you have a standardized fleet? Because you want them all to be the same, but when there's a new technology, how do you implement it? You know, that's that's a tough one. It really is a tough one. And, you know, if if there's two things firefighters hate, and, you know, as a firefighter myself, I can tell you this, there's two things firefighters hate. It's change and the way things are. We are all the same. None of us, none of us enjoy change and we all want to see change all at the same time. So integrating new technologies into a fleet is always a struggle. You know, it, the, the fleet standardization portion of things obviously, you know, creates a huge benefit, but it also creates a, a backside challenge in, in the sense that everybody gets used to a certain thing, right? And when you get used to a certain thing, you become comfortable with it. And once that happens, change is always a little bit harder. Integrating new technologies into a fleet can really be a challenge because of that, but it, it really takes an open mind and, and an open, um, I guess, thought process through the committee to make sure that we're understanding how we're changing those things. You know, as, as sales reps, salespeople, the people that are, you know, building the trucks, things like that, there's a lot of transparency that needs to be had with these committees. I can't stress that enough. You know, the, the transparency is huge. You know, being able to present those new technologies, understand how that's going to work best for the fleet, understand how it's going to integrate, and then, you know, really understanding how to best present it to the firefighters on the floor, to present it to the apparatus committee so that it can be accepted. Um, you know, of course, all of it starts from, from the individual fleets, from the individual cities, and every single piece of these new technologies and, you know, the, the pieces that we try to integrate to these things are really driven from a place of how can we make this easier for your business and your business being firefighting, obviously, right? So, you know, making things easier uh, really is the way to integrate those new technologies. And, you know, it, it has to be done in a very specific way, which is different for every fleet, but it can be a real challenge. And, you know, it, I, as a, you know, as a, as a sales guy, I've been doing this for just about 20 years now. And, and I can tell you, you know, from all of the experiences that I've had is it's, it's never easy to make those changes, but every individual fleet will have a problem that they need to solve. Those technologies will eventually help them solve those problems. And as long as, as long as we can keep that transparency open, it helps us manage that change. Uh, at the end of the day, it ends up making for an incredibly robust product. And, you know, future proofing and things like that really help with that. But, you know, managing that change, it's, it's all about transparency. When it comes to order life cycle, how would fleet standardization impact that order? The order life cycle tends to, tends to become a little bit more manageable when you're purchasing a fleet. And again, this is, this is all based on the city and how they want to do things uh, or purchasing and how they want to do things. But Typically, when you come to purchasing, you know, a single apparatus, the life cycle of that apparatus or the purchasing life cycle, life cycle of that apparatus is, you know, start with, you know, the fact finding mission, create a specification, order the truck, go through the process, you know, wait your lead time, whatever it takes, you know, to make that happen and then end up with a fire truck, shiny fire truck, new in your hall. Everybody's happy. On the fleet side of things, uh, it actually takes that entire front end of the order process, although it might be a little bit more time intensive to make sure that, you know, you've got the specs exactly correct the way you want them, but you're doing it once across 15, 20, 30 units, right? So, and it is same thing when it comes to a, an approval visit or a pre-construction meeting, you know, when you're, you're looking at making sure that the drawings are exact and that sort of thing, rather than doing one at a time. It's a single unit, right? And we take that single unit, multiply it a number of times. Where the struggle comes in is on the backside, because of course, when you purchase a number of units all at the same time, they all retire at the same time. And you know that when you look at the life cycle of the actual apparatus, 
you know, that's something that each city, each purchasing department, each committee, you know, it needs to evaluate on their own is, is where, where do those pockets sit and how does that affect operations? How does that affect budget? That sort of thing. One of the challenges that comes in in the order life cycle, but, uh, you know, generally speaking, it is a far easier process to do, you know, one set of work, one set of drawings on 15 units than it is for one. I think you pretty much hit on this, but I'll ask you in case you want to re-say any answer. What are the benefits of having a standardized fleet in terms of cost saving and operational efficiency? So we talked about the operational efficiency, and I mean, that part is, is really key. But one thing that we didn't talk about is maintenance. You know, these, these apparatus that we're buying, and regardless of the brand, I mean, we're, we're Pierce, we love Pierce, we're number one for a reason. But the, you know, the whole... The whole ecosystem of everything includes a maintenance component. And, you know, we are firefighters. We know how to break things really, really well. You know, being able to, being able to keep these trucks in service is a pretty key component. And when you standardize a fleet, you're, you're creating the same truck over and over and over again. And, and, you know, in typical departments that have the means to purchase a fleet or have the need to purchase a fleet will have some type of maintenance or repair program in effect, whether that be through the dealership or on their own. When you standardize that fleet, it allows that shop to stock a single set of parts, to stock exactly the same components for every truck and be prepared for a situation as it happens, when it happens, rather than trying to procure and source all of the parts and pieces that they need for each truck. It also allows each one of the technicians that are working on that apparatus to be familiar with the same apparatus all the way across. What that means for the department is less downtime in the end. And less downtime means more operational efficiency as it goes through. So you know, it's, there, there are some huge benefits to that. How can departments effectively implement a standardized fleet across different locations? So if they have multiple areas in their district. So this is a, this is a tough one. Um, and again, it's different for everybody. But in my experience, what I've seen is there's kind of two different ways you can do it. You know, uh, one way, of course, is to is to build a single specification and roll that out across, you know, everybody. And once the committee sets up, you know, having somebody from each district so that everybody has buy-in, we all know how everything's supposed to run within each. It doesn't always work that way. You know, we've got, we've got several regions in our area that have a different demographic that they serve, that have different geographical areas that they serve, and it really requires a different specification for each. What that means for us, though, is, you know, on the fleet standardization side, we can take different components of those apparatus and still manufacture them with the same engine, with the same axles, with the same air dryers, you know, to create those parts commonalities between all of the trucks. Also, you know, manufacturing them with the same processes to make sure that, you know, everybody's familiar with the rigs. Uh, but be able to change them enough so that they suit the needs of the geographic area and the demographic that they're serving, you know, depending on changes in water tank, you know, more compartment space or less compartment space. Maybe they need a shorter wheelbase. Maybe we have a truck that needs a four-wheel drive system. You know, there's, there's so many different options that we can go with. Uh, I'll, I'll use the city of Calgary as another example because I love those guys. Shout out to the city of Calgary. Uh, but we, we were able to take that same aerial specification and create out of that, a singular custom cab design for every single one of their apparatus types. So it doesn't matter which apparatus type a firefighter is using, whether it be an aerial, a platform, whether it be a, an engine, whether it be a tender, whether it be a rescue, when they sit in the driver's seat of that truck, all of the switches are in exactly the same spot. The steering wheel is exactly the same. The transmission control is exactly the same. The truck is painted the same color. Everything on that truck is exactly the same. It all feels exactly the same. So every single time a firefighter switches a, a, an apparatus, there isn't an innate learning process that goes along with it. It's exactly the same as it goes through. So managing the change on, you know, fleet across different locations is kind of the same thing. We want to make sure that, you know, everybody has the apparatus that they need for what they need to do. But there's ways that we can go about making sure that the pump panel remains exactly the same or, you know, cab layouts remain exactly the same or shelving layouts remain exactly the same. Those types of things that really make it easy for an operator to move from one district to the next, to the next, to the next, be able to operate those units or in a mutual aid capacity operate those units and still have the maintenance benefits of having a standardized fleet. 
So if I were to be on a committee and we decided, yes, this is what we're doing, we're going to standardize our fleet, there's all these options to consider when you're going in and you're going to standardize your fleet. But is there some that weigh a heavier weight than others, like cost efficiency or design or layout? Like, where should I lay out my priorities when I'm designing my standardized fleet? It, interesting that you asked that question. And it, the priority really lays in what is most important for each department, right? And this is where, you know, as as Pierce, as commercial, as all of the dealer network that we have, this is where we really shine. You know, we we have a lot of experience in making sure that those items are are correct for you. And in many cases, there needs to be a little bit of guidance, right, to understand where those where those different priorities lie. My process, right? I have a process. Every salesperson has a process. But when my process, when I start talking to a department, is very simple. And it doesn't matter if it's a fleet department or any other department. It it all starts with what is your department? How many people do you serve? How many calls a year do you run? Who do you serve? What are your challenges? What are the problems that you face? And then it goes from there into what's your vision, right? How do you want to accomplish those problems? From there into let's make a list of your needs and a list of your wants, and we'll see what we can fit inside your budget. That helps, you know, us as salespeople, as technicians, as, you know, the people that design these things every day, really get a holistic view of what the department really needs as an apparatus and, you know, maybe come to the table with a solution that nobody had ever thought of before. But in doing that kind of four-step process, it really brings to the forefront what those priorities are. So, you know, if you were sitting across from me as a fleet customer and asking those same questions, you know, that's what we would be doing is going through that process to really understand what those priorities are, are for Alley, you know, what the priorities are for the city of Appleton, all of those, because they're different right? And no two are the same. But when we start really flushing out where the issues are, that's where we can start really seeing where the priorities lie. So based on your experience, do you have any recommendations for fire departments on how to best manage their order and best practice for working together collaboratively with their sales rep to get the best result? The entire process is based on trust. Right. And, you know, as firefighters, it's it's all the same. We need to know that there's a, a high level of trust there, you know, and it's it's the the industry that we're in right now and the current state of the industry. There's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of information that's floating around. There's a lot of a lot of fear, you know, that that's happening and a lot of a lot of things that are moving and changing all at the same time. But an open line of communication is really key. Right. And that that is the best piece that I can move forward, you know, from an industry perspective to a firefighting perspective, you know, to, toward the purchasers and the committees and things like that, is maintain that open line of communication with your sales reps. Uh, you know, whether it be your local Pierce representative or whether it be any other manufacturer that you might be working with on turnout gear or on, you know, tools and equipment or hose, maintaining that open line of communication is really critical. As things change in the industry, obviously, we're all going to come up with challenges. And, and every manufacturer has their own challenges from time to time as they go through. But that open line of communication allows, you know, that sales rep or that project manager to communicate with you, the purchaser, and you to communicate with them back about what those challenges are and how to best accomplish, you know, a solution to them as you go through. I think the big thing to remember is, you know, and speaking for myself and for our dealership, but also for the rest of the peer dealership, you know, the rest of the Pierce dealerships and the sales representatives that are out there. Although it, you know, it might seem the, the standard kind of thought process is, you know, salespeople are out there to sell and, you know, yeah, we are. That's, that's what we do, but it, that's not our main focus. You know, the main focus is across the network. We want to be able to help, right? We, we, we're not there to sell you a fire truck. We're there to help you buy one. You know, and that's that's really why we do what we do is to make sure that, you know, the majority of us are firefighters. We want to know that our friends from six miles down the road are going to be able to roll up to that fire at three o'clock in the morning and be able to trust the piece of equipment and trust the people that are behind it. We want to help you purchase a fire truck. So yeah, that's managing the fleet order, standardization, all of that stuff. All it comes down to is just an open line of communication. Talk as much as you can. When you're having a struggle, 
you know, let's talk about it. You know, get across the table and, and come to a collaborative agreement that helps everybody. We want to make sure that everybody benefits and that the right product comes out at the end of the day. It's all about that open-minded communication. Thank you so much for coming on the Pierce Dispatch podcast. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you very much for having me, Ali. It's been a it's been an absolute blast, and I can't wait to see where all of this goes from here. 